No matter where you live, whether in the country or the city, on a suburban street, or even up in a treehouse, water surrounds you. It's in everything, except it's water you can't see. It's the water needed to grow the tree that gives us the paper to make a book, the water used to manufacture the metal and rubber that become a bicycle or the water used to create computer processors in a laptop. Water footprints measure the virtual water in everything, even in the food you eat, which is useful because around 80% of all water consumed in the United States goes to agriculture. A typical almond grove in California's Central Valley is literally flooded with water multiple times each growing season. That makes the water footprint for almonds pretty high. Eating one almond means eating one virtual gallon of water. A walnut takes nearly five gallons, while a single orange may need 14 gallons to grow. The water footprint of one avocado, it can be 60 gallons. That's a big water footprint. Everything we eat requires making choices and those choices add up. Meat, for example, has a very large water footprint. First, cattle drink a lot of water. It also takes an enormous amount of water, by far the largest part of cattle's water footprint, to grow the forage, hay, and grain on which they feed. But not all beef is the same. Cattle that are grass-fed and forage on open pasture rely more on rainwater than those raised on feedlots, where they subsist more on an irrigation-soaked diet of corn, soy, and other grains. Either way, meat eaters have a larger water footprint than vegetarians, while vegans, people who don't eat meat, eggs, or dairy products, have even smaller water footprints. What you eat is the biggest part of your water footprint, so reducing portion sizes is a good thing. You can also reduce your food waste, which is an even bigger problem. We waste nearly 40% of the food grown each year, from field to truck to market to your fridge. How much water is that? Nearly a quarter of all our fresh water use. Because just like the food in your pantry, you also have a water footprint. It's the sum total of every personal water decision you make. And in some cases, it's even water you can see. Start with your kitchen sink. How much water do you run each day? Does your faucet have an aerator which reduces water flow? And what about washing dishes? Do you do them by hand or with a dishwasher? Believe it or not, washing dishes by hand usually takes more water than newer water efficient dishwashers. Check to see if yours has an Energy Star rating. Those that do use much less water than conventional dishwashers. Another place you can calculate your water footprint is in, sorry. Another place you can calculate your water footprint is in the bathroom. From shower to sink to toilet. Being mindful of your water use at the bathroom sink can really lower your water footprint. The same goes for your shower. Shorter showers mean using less water. And converting to low flow shower heads can further cut your water use. You can also install low flow toilets. They can decrease your water footprint from five to about 1.5 gallons per flush. And you know, you don't always have to flush. As they say, if it's yellow, let it mellow. You might also want to look at how you wash your clothes. Conventional washing machines use 23 gallons per load, while more efficient models nearly cut that in half. And if you don't wash your clothes at home, you're looking at anywhere from 13 to 38 gallons for a load of laundry. So if you care about water use, it's worth learning more about how your clothes are washed. 
Like your food, your clothes also have a unique water footprint. You can extend it by making clothes last longer or by donating them when you're done instead of throwing them away. You can learn more about your water footprint at watercalculator.org. It's a personalized, interactive experience that helps you understand more about your personal water use. Water. It's in everything from your food to your clothes. It's in things where you live and in things like carrots that may come from halfway around the world. From places where water could one day run out, which for some people would mean no more carrots. That's why it's important to remember that water everywhere is finite. And tools like water footprints are a valuable aid to help you use a precious resource more wisely. To learn more about terms like virtual water, water footprints, energy star, low flow, and aerators, visit lexiconofwater.com for a collection of people and words that can change the world.